Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Today I wanted to talk about what is happening in China because of what's happening in China, how it's affecting all of us and how at the end you'll realize we really don't have a solution for this problem because this problem is so complicated. <laughs> it is like trying to remove a knot which is, has an, multiple knots within that knot. So it's like one of those problems, puzzles which we have and uh, the solution may never come other than market forces forcing things to happen in one way or another. There is going to be pain, but where this pain is going to land is what we do not know. It's like playing with a revolver with a bullet, single bullet in it, as they say, the Russian roulette. And who's going to get shot is what the question lies. So all of this relates to China because China was the, considered the factory of the world at one point and it was touted to be the solution to all our problems. We'll send our raw materials there. Or they have their own raw materials, they'll create these products with their cheap labor and in turn export it to us at a low cost with our efficient logistic systems in place and we in turn will sell it to our consumers and our consumers are happy and uh, everyone's happy. But then now we are where we are. The pandemic happened, geopolitical tensions happening because jobs have disappeared. These consumers who are in our developed world who are buying these cheap Chinese products suddenly realized when all the factories left, everything left, they don't have work. And this led to a lot of severe imbalances in society and where we are right now. So what's happened now is because things in China have confounded and become worse because of the pandemic and the real estate sector, which has uh, imploded, has left a lot of Chinese with no desire to spend their money and domestic demand has fallen off a cliff in China. There is no domestic demand for anything in China right now, especially in the rural areas of China. So, at the same time, the Chinese factory workers are going to factories, still making the products, and it's leading to a severe glut in supplies, meaning China is making more than the world can use. And now China has to take this and dump it somewhere, and it's going around the world, trying to push its products down everyone's throat. And consumers do want these products, but the problem is when we take these products on board at a lower cost, it forces companies, whatever, who are already in severe critical conditions economically. When Chinese dump, they're not able to compete anymore, forcing more economic hardship and more closures in companies and factories. And this is going round and round. As Anand says, it's a negative feedback loop, which is not helping us. The Chinese factories output is not only a concern for China, it is also a concern, international concern now, and the European leaders have recently expressed dissatisfaction and hinted at a possible tariff on Chinese electric cars due to the overcapacity issues. Even the Americans, Joe Biden is saying the same thing. American EV cars um, are struggling to compete with the Chinese, so we're going to slap some tariff on the Chinese cars and Chinese EV-related products. Is this a solution? I don't know. This is going to work. I don't see it. And despite all these concerns, China has announced there's no binding, non-binding proposals to limit the expansion of its battery industry. And uh, this approach is reluctant to implement these stringent controls because naturally, it is a new cutting-edge technology and they have their own workers to worry about. So there's no way the Chinese government is going to stop subsidies and supporting these industries locally. And they have come to these claims that they're not over capacity and especially in clean uh, energy sectors like EV and solar panels, asserting that competitiveness is what is driving this, not any subsidy, that innovation is what is creating this glut. And the Chinese are innovating and creating such new products at such pace. The rest of the world is not able to keep up with it. <laughs> so this is very nice that each one is passing the parcel to the other one. And the high-tech industry is very crucial for the Chinese economy right now, considering everything making it unlikely that China will reduce any support for these sectors despite whatever pressures internationally has been put upon them. And these industries are also vital for global trade and is leading to rising trade barriers. Like we saw the chip problem which is happening and the Huawei issues which have been cropping up. And it's been going on for years now. And it is very clear there is no solution to this. And even analysts have suggested a dual approach to address overcapacity to stabilize the housing market and boost consumer spending in China. But it's not happening. And it's a complex and a challenging problem. And even Janet Yellen, when she visited China, she's advocated that China should focus more on the domestic consumers' demand than rather than focusing on external markets to rebalance its economic strategy. But the problem for China is there's a weak domestic demand. Evidence is, is by the drop in industrial capacity utilization to the lowest level since 2020. 
This has led to an increase in exports and falling prices. Sector-specific gut seems to be especially prevalent in, in the solar panel industry, which is experiencing a surplus, causing price wars, reduction in profitability. And in contrast, the electric vehicle production shows mixed utilization of rates, with some companies operating above industry average. So, this is similar to the Japanese strategy in 1980s. The Chinese companies are establishing, starting to establish production uh, facilities overseas, which may help them ease trade tensions and face uh, resistance in regions like in the US. So, Japanese companies conglomerates did this. That's why those Japanese companies are the ones Anand's targeting and Warren Buffett is targeting, where they have factories all over the world who make profits and they send it back to Japan. And now with the low yen, these Japanese companies are showing surging in profit. Same way the Chinese, large Chinese companies are setting up factories all over the world. So that way, there's no pressure on them saying that you're exporting and dumping it here. We're making it locally and we're dumping it. <laughs> this will be the answer to this. So this is some interesting times we're living in. Like I said, the root cause of this overcapacity is uh, included in the state-led expansion, not matching by domestic consumption growth. Meaning the Chinese government knows these are important sectors. Jobs are important, so it keeps expanding on them, though there is no demand for it locally. Options to manage this include underutilizing production capacities and maintaining inventories and increasing exports and reducing imports. All of which right now the current Chinese government will have no appetite of doing considering the internal domestic pressures it's facing. So this is what I started with the onset of the video. Yes, we all know what the problem is. We all are aware of it. It's like when you know that you're overweight and you need to lose the weight. Doctors are saying, if you don't lose the weight, Mr. Vinod, you're going to be getting onto all kinds of medication. Please start looking at losing weight. And I am staring at the wall and I know it has to be done. And there's no ways, two ways about it. Same is true for the Chinese and the world economies and factories when it comes to this production glut. We need to find out how to navigate this. And the answers are bitter and they are hard and we'll have to learn to swallow them. Do put on down in the comments down below what you think. What ideas and solutions do you think you can think of to solve these issues? Thanks for watching the video as always, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.